It's a good time to be a space elf today, no less than four new models previewed for Eldar, plus a great big resin bloodthirster from Horus Heresy. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're just taking a look at Games Workshop's latest set of previews. These ones were done live at the Las Vegas Open, but they were also streamed online as well. The preview was one for multiple game systems, the 40k did get a slightly more attention than most, though to be honest I'm not sure we've really got many surprises here, all the actual 40k plastic kits were ones that we already knew were coming. For the Eldar we've got Morgan Ra, one of the members of the new Corsair kill team, three shining spears, and of course the enormous avatar of Kane. And for Horus Heresy we've got the unique character bloodthirster, Kabanda, which I guess if you do just mainly play 40k, you could always use as an alternative sculpture or bloodthirster if you wanted to. So let's go through all of the new miniatures and talk about what we know about them so far. First up we have the murderous looking new avatar of Kane. We got some blurry pictures of it yesterday, shortly followed up by Games Workshop showing off the model in full. Certainly looks like a spectacular new centerpiece to the Eldar army. Apparently this guy stands around about twice as tall as his previous incarnation, so all ready to go toe to toe with greater demons. It seems that they have been really quite flexible with the options for the Wailing Doom, his molten blade, as you've got options for it either for a sword, spear or axe. Really quite nice stylistic touches in there that don't really change its function in game at all. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing though, it means that you can just equip it the way that looks best for you. It also does look like there's a few different head options as well, you've either got the side metal plumes or the back one, and also option for a bare headed avatar as well. We've already talked through his previewed rules in a previous video, but at least from the playtester codex he looks like he's 270 points and an absolute beast all round, 14 wounds at toughness 8, with a 2 plus save, 4 plus invul, and halving incoming damage. The Wailing Doom strikes at a massive strength 14, AP minus 5 and damage D6 plus 2, with a molten beam type ranged attack and also the chance for double attacks if he's fighting some hordes or space marines. Overall he looks really quite tough and threatening, and has changed in form really quite a bit from his previous version, where he had nowhere near the same sort of stats that he does now, but also he could be screened as he counted as a character less than 10 wounds. Overall though, looking like a really nice model and an exciting one to be putting on the table. I'm sure there'll be at least a few Eldar players looking to pick one up. Next up was one of the models they teased around New Year, Morgan Ra. This guy's the Phoenix Lord for the Dark Reapers, and we were already shown off the Dark Reapers on one of Games Workshop's Monday previews for the Craft Worlds. To be honest, I do think that Morgan Ra looks a little bit better than those models. It still seems to be very much Eldar dressing up for Halloween, but maybe not looking quite as oddly goofy as the Dark Reaper's helms did. He still seems to be going for very much full Grim Reaper effect though. A ragged cape and hood, and then that enormous Morgantar shuriken cannon and the Reaper blade that it's got. I think there were a few units on the internet that said that he had an Assault 6 shuriken cannon, striking at strength 7, AP minus 2 and damage 2, and also counting as more models for the purposes of morale when he kills them. In any case, a fun new miniature to get out of Finecast. Seems like a fairly faithful update of the previous sculpts to me. Most of the elements seem pretty similar, though I must admit the previous one did have its own charm. Next up we have one model from this Corsair Void Scarred Kill Team, which is apparently the name of the 10 model kill team that's going to be coming in that Kill Team Nackmund book. I'm going to guess that this guy that we're seeing here is probably going to be the Squad Sergeant or whatever they're called. These guys have been rumoured for really quite a while now, but it is good to have some final confirmation though at the moment there's no real hints as to what they're going to be facing off against in that box. So far each kill team release has been a brand new plastic kit, or at least in the case of the Tower Pathfinders, having an extra upgrade sprue in the box, so that's likely to be something interesting as well. I think it really is quite cool that they're representing the Corsairs in plastic. Before the rumours came out for this Eldar release, I really wouldn't have expected them to at all. They already have really quite a lot of Eldar factions on the go, and these guys really haven't seen much representation on the tabletop, aside from some Forge World models that haven't been particularly well supported rules wise. The Corsairs do appear to be treading a kind of middle line between Craft Worlds and Drakari. They're basically Eldar pirates, so they've got a lot more of a nature of just doing exactly what they want, far less rigid than the Craft World, but maybe not quite as dark and depraved as the Drakari. I like the way they've given this guy a whole bunch of common pirate tropes as well. You certainly can't miss the great big Eldar parrot that's swooping over him. He's got a feather tucked into his top knot, pretty much an Eldar cutlass in his left hand, and of course an eye patch on his left eye. Kind of a shame that they only decided to show off this one guy as opposed to the entire Corsair kill team. I think it's pretty much guaranteed that they will be really quite individual, customizable models. That does seem to be par for the course with these kill team releases. Rules wise, we don't really know too much about them yet, 
They are rumoured to be a troops choice in the new Craft World Codex. I do wonder whether the Corsairs might be represented as sort of like their own Craft World in the book. We'd already have Prince Iriel, who's already a Corsair, really. They've been rumoured to be able to take a mix of different Craft World war gear, things like Drakari blasters and shredders, and even, weirdly, an Eldar Wraith cannon as a heavy weapon somehow. I'm not sure how that will be represented on an infantry model, to be honest. They said in stream that they'll have some sort of 40k rules that can either allow them to join the Trukari or the Craft Worlds. Hopefully written smartly enough that they don't mess up army-wide faction abilities like Power from Pain or these Strands of Fate. And just generally it's overall quite good fun to see Games Workshop supporting another minor faction. I feel they're not really in need of a massive codex all of their own, but getting a unique data sheet with a whole ton of flexibility is really quite a big win in my opinion. Next and lastly for the Eldar today we have three Shining Spears. Again, we'd already seen one of these as a kind of datasheet insert image in the top left hand corner, though it's much better to see them actually as a full unit and in better clarity. I feel like they've done a good job with these. The old sculpt for the Shining Spears certainly was a classic one, but it was looking very, very dated by modern standards, and the vast majority of people I saw running Shining Spears tended to convert them out of other bits. I think they're pretty much going for the look of Eldar Knights with those crested helms and lances with streaming pennants and things. It looks like two of these guys here have laser lances, and the Axarg appears to be armed with a star lance and shuriken cannon. The bikes look maybe a bit bigger and beefier than some of the other ones as well, maybe just ones that can go ridiculously fast. They've got an interesting tri-fin design around the engine, maybe looking like they're designed for even more speed and manoeuvrability than the standard ones. You can see another few options in the image here. It looks like the Axarg can take a standard laser lance as well, and he can also take a power sword as they could previously. I don't know if they'll actually somehow manage to balance the rules so the power sword's worth taking now. In general, it always felt like a flat downgrade compared with those laser lances in previous editions. Having a closer look at the models as well, it does appear that they seem to be a different kit to the Shroud Runners. I did see some people speculating as to whether or not it might be a multi-build kit, though to be honest, for me that sounded a bit unlikely, just because you'd have so many bits left over from building either build, whether it's a whole bunch of fancy lances and engine parts, or two rangers. In any case, it's really quite a cool set of Eldar releases today. I do wonder whether or not this is going to be the last of them. For me, I think perhaps the only two kits that we might not have seen yet are whether or not models like the Swooping Hawks or the Warp Spiders are being regenerated. I've seen both of them rumoured at one time or another, but no images or hints or anything that they are actually coming. They've certainly been revealing models for the Craft Worlds each Monday. I do wonder whether that will continue in the next few weeks up to the Codex's release. Incidentally, that's rumoured to be coming either in late February or early March. But again, as of yet, Games Workshop haven't officially confirmed that. I'm sure we'll get more news nearer the time. Finally, I thought I'd just touch on the Horus Heresy reveal as well, which was just a single model in this massive bloodthirster, Cabanda. Kind of an interesting one, as it is a demon character that I've actually heard about in the lore before, but wasn't represented with a physical model that you could play in Horus Heresy or 40k. He's had a lifelong feud with the Blood Angels, and has fought with them multiple times, though I remember a fairly ominous bit of recent lore where they were beset by the forces of High Fleet Leviathan, the force of Chaos closed in, and after a brief warp storm, this guy just piled all of the skulls of the Tyranids that he'd slain into a massive great big eight-pointed star just to scare the Blood Angels on Baal. Supposedly this guy is one of the most powerful of Korn's servants, so I'm sure his model will make a pretty decent stand-in for something like an Exalted Bloodthirster in 40k, though I'd be kind of surprised if they do actually come out with official 40k rules for him. I suppose it's not impossible. In any case, there didn't seem to be any news of the rumoured upcoming Horus Heresy plastic release. I thought there might have been a quite good chance of them revealing that at the LVO. We've seen rumoured pictures of that really quite a long time ago now, so I was thinking that it might be somewhere close to being finished now. So that's just about it for the 40k and Horus Heresy stuff. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Maybe no real enormous surprises out of that, a lot of things that they'd hinted or teased at before or had been leaks, but overall really quite a lot of good news if you are collecting Eldar. Their range just seems to be due for a really massive refresh when their codex does eventually drop. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.